One prompt, nine images, pure AI cinema. No more generating scene by scene and hoping everything fits together. This workflow I'm gonna show you lets you see your entire story from one prompt before you ever create a single video. But the workflow isn't even the best part because I'm gonna give you a custom GPT that is going to act as your personal expert director and walk you through the entire creative process so you always get an end result that looks intentional and meets your vision, no matter your experience. So the secret sauce is this guy, our three by three grid, which allows us to see a number of scenes telling an entire story, which also maintains character and visual consistency throughout. And the cool thing is we are able to create this from a single prompt. So instead of creating each scene individually and laboriously one by one and making sure they all fit together, we can essentially get a giant storyboard from which we can pull from and create individual videos with. Now, I got this idea from Tao Prompts, great channel, great creator, definitely check them out, who got this from somebody else from Twitter. Now, I saw how they executed it and I figured we could streamline this considerably because truth be told, it's not enough to just start here by the three by three grid because we're actually looking at a three-step process. And the first step is, you guessed it, creating the foundation image. This is our main character, this is the visual aesthetic, and it is imperative that we create some sort of starting image that we bring to AI to eventually create that three by three grid for us so we maintain consistency throughout. And if that's phase one, the creation of the foundation image, then phase two is where we come up with this prompt for this three by three, nine shot narrative grid, and that's exactly what I have here in front of you. Now there's a lot going on, right? We need the instructions, the character, the setting, maybe an antagonist, a story arc, and then we need nine narrative shots. And each of these shots, as you will see, include specific types of camera angles that you probably don't even know exist. Beyond that, we also wanna include things like style keywords and also give it additional information that says, hey, you need to make sure the character and the visuals maintain consistency throughout or else it doesn't even do anything for us. And then after we do that, and we're actually happy with our three by three grid, then we move on to phase three, the final phase, where we turn those grids into videos and we need specific prompts for each of those. Again, you need specific verbiage, specific nomenclature. So AI gives us what we want. And so you see, even throughout these three phases, there's a lot of sort of technical skill required if you just aren't used to this at all. But that is where our custom GPT comes in and I'm giving it to you today for free. If you go to the pinned comment, you head to the link, you'll find it inside of my free school. And I'm not only giving you a link to the custom GPT, I'm also giving you the entire system prompt I use. And as you can see, this is very, very detailed. And the reason I'm giving you the system prompt is so you aren't stuck inside of ChatGPT's infrastructure. You can take the system prompt and you can take it to Claude, you can take it to Gemini, you can take it wherever. So you can essentially do what we're doing wherever you want. And so let's talk real quickly about the system prompt so you can understand what this GPT is actually buying you. So first of all, it understands that we need to operate in three phases. So first phase, it's gonna make sure that we create a reference image, a foundation image that we're happy with, and it's gonna give us the prompt to actually create that. From there, we then describe the story we're trying to create, and it's gonna use that reference image to come up with the prompt that gives us that nine shot grid. And then once we're happy with the grid we eventually get, it will give us the prompts for the videos itself. And very little in this prompt is hard coded, it's very iterative, as in, it's gonna have an exchange with you to make sure you're getting what you actually want. It isn't just gonna spit the same prompts to you in the same style over and over and over again. And what I really like about it too is that it asks for sort of real world concepts. What I mean by that is if you're going for a specific visual style, it will probably ask you what sort of movies or what sort of images you're trying to emulate so we can bring that into the prompt. And so for the rest of this video, I'm gonna show you this workflow step by step so you can recreate it yourself and really supercharge your AI video creation process. So step one, we're creating the reference image. How did I get this guy? Well, the prompt I used to create this is right here. Now AI came up with it. I used the same system prompt I showed you, but I'm just doing it inside of a Claude custom project. Again, it doesn't really matter what LLM you use as long as it follows the prompt. And so it gives me the subject, it gives me a shot set up, the style keywords, etc. Now these style keywords, as well as the subject, again, this just comes from a back and forth with that custom GPT. So I then took this prompt and I actually went to Mid Journey to create my starting image. Now a note on Mid Journey versus Nano Banana Pro. By and large, Nano Banana Pro is the right tool to use for 99 out of 100 cases. It is the best AI image tool in the game today. But specifically for like single shot images, especially like character references, you know, there's no text. I'm just looking for like a really cool vibe. Mid Journey is awesome. 
add that. Now you don't need to use MidiJourney. If you get the same prompt to Nano Banana Pro, you'll get something similar. So what Holes are gonna do for the rest of phase one is continue to have that back and forth with the custom GPT till it gives you a prompt that creates an image you are happy with. Just make sure that this image is a close-up. It's a lot easier to go from a detailed close-up image and then have a distant image that's created in a certain scene than to have an image that's far away and then try to do a close-up later, right? It's easier to go from more detail to less detail Really hard for AI to go from less detail to more detail and maintain consistency. So now we move on to the fun part, which is creating our three by three grid. Now, like I talked about in the intro, this is really cool because we already have the starting image for each and every scene we're gonna create. And from a quick view, we can understand how the story is gonna unfold and whether we wanna change anything or not. Now there's two things we need to create this. The first we've already done, that's the reference image. And you see him reflected in all the images and the visual aesthetic throughout all nine shots. And the second thing we need is the prompt to generate it. And this is the exact prompt I used. Now, you don't have to come up with this on your own. The custom GPT is gonna make this for you. After you've fed it the reference image, it's gonna to know to move on to phase two, and essentially it's gonna ask you, what sort of story are you, are you trying to create? Right, the story I came up with was a lone crusader, he's leaving a castle behind, he walks into a forest, and he sees a dark hooded figure. Just based off that, it then comes up with the nine narrative shots. And it already knows to sort of vary the images, you know, and vary the angles. Like you see here, we have a wide establishing shot. We have a low angle. We have a medium shot. We have one that's more bird's eye, right? So there's a certain amount of like dynamism already built into the prompt. So you don't get something that just looks the same over and over and over again. And one little trick that I like to use is giving it real life references. So I told it that I wanted like the Revenant aesthetic, you know, the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio film, because I sort of wanted that like wintry ice, like dark kind of vibe, but not like too dark. I wanted like cool cinematography dark. And I think it did a pretty good job of actually reflecting that here. And so just like we did in phase one, phase two, you're just gonna continue to iterate with the AI till it gives you a prompt you like. You then go to Nano Banana Pro and then you just give it the prompt and it's gonna spit this out for you. But make sure when you create this that you do it in 4K. If you just do it at 2K, the detail is not going to be crisp enough because what we're actually going to do in phase three is you're essentially just going to take screenshots of each and every grid and you're going to use that as a starting image. So if you're doing 1K or 2K, it's just not going to be high enough fidelity. 4K gives us what we need. So now we move on to the last phase of the workflow, which is creating the image to video prompts. And again, once you've told the custom GPT you're good to go on phase two, it's going to automatically move to this. So then you're just going to feed it your nine by nine grid and it's automatically going to spit out all the prompts that you see right here. Now, I think it does a pretty good job with these. It doesn't go overly detailed with the prompts because if you're giving it a starting image when you're creating a video, you don't have to go crazy with explaining everything. So it keeps it simple yet detailed enough that it's gonna do what you want it to do. And so now what you need to do is you are gonna go to your nine by nine grid. You are going to take a screenshot of the scene you're creating for the video. So if I was doing this one, if I was doing the first scene right, I just screenshot the top left. I'm then going to copy the prompt it gave me. And then I'm going to go to my video generator of choice, paste in the prompt, add the reference image like you see down here on the left, and I'm just going to have it generate it. That's it. Now, in terms of what video generator you should use these days, I'm really loving Cling Video 01. I think it's great. Um, it does a really good job in terms of motion. It's very fast. It's relatively cheap. And I do it in 1080p. Your other options, well, the one downside to Kling 01 is it doesn't give you sound. Now, if you want natural sound to come from the video itself, your options are going to be Kling 2.6 and VO 3.1. I wouldn't suggest doing Sora because Sora 2 is a disaster when it comes to actually giving it reference images that look like realistic people, right? For whatever reason, they just don't want to do that. So your options these days is really VO 3.1 and Kling. I think clings a little better as of late December, 2025. And you're just gonna repeat that process for the rest of the scenes. And you see me doing that right here, right? I take the reference image, I take the prompt it gave me, and I just put it into the video generator and continue to go down the line. And if that seems very simple, it's because it is. We did all the hard work up front in phase one and two. So phase three, actually generating the videos is sort of the victory lap. And when you do all that, you'll get a final product that looks like this.
So that's it for today's video. I hope this workflow was useful and I hope you get a ton of use out of this custom GPT. Again, there's a link to it in the pinned comments. I think it helps a lot with streamlining this process and making sure you do all the steps in the correct order so you get a coherent, intentional, consistent product that you like. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment and I'll see you guys around.